Hey everyone, before we start the show, I want to tell you about the newest addition to the Oh It's Big Ron Studios roster. It's a show I'm a frequent guest on called Talking Loud and Saying Nothing. My good friend Mass Potential hosts the show, and along with his guests, he talks about everything under the sun. Dating, politics, food, you name it. He even answers advice questions from some brave listeners. If you're looking for a lighthearted take on just about everything, check out Talking Loud and Saying Nothing with no G's. That's Talking Loud and Saying Nothing. You could find it wherever you get your podcasts. Previously on Time Well Spent. We hate to stereotype, but the truth of the matter is, is that a lot of those Hispanics are rapists. That's a fact. Do you know what a fact is? If you can't give respect, please don't respond to my post. This is no debate, just an opinion. Have a good day. Which one is it? Are you stating facts or your opinion? One of them is worthy of respect and one is not. It's a fact that most male Hispanics criminals are rapists. This brings me back to my original question. Do you know what a fact is? Ronald, you are an ass hole. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of Time Well Spent with Ronald, the podcast that nobody asked for, yet somebody is listening to. I'm Ronald. Let's get right to it. The recap you heard at the top of the episode was from our previous episode, episode 10, which if you have not heard, I would encourage you to stop right here, go back and listen to it. It should be available in the same feed you found this podcast. It is episode 10 entitled Screenshots, which would make this episode for all of my current listeners, episode 11, Screenshots 2. For new and old listeners alike, the strong language we heard at the top will be the extent of what we hear today, so please don't think this is a show that takes the A word lightly. In today's episode, we continue the reenactment of the Facebook argument I was involved in from our previous episode with the following logistical details which remained for the most part the same with Mass Potential playing the role of Harry. Mass Potential, yo. Playing the role of me in the argument will again be my mother, fan favorite Peggy Lee. Hello, it's Peggy Lee. And new to the story and episode this week, a person so private that while you might recognize her voice, she would not allow me to say her name on air, so I will simply call her... Esmeralda Gutentag. Esmeralda will be playing the role of my sister. Just as a reminder, every time you hear my voice, think of it as my internal voice and the omniscient narrator in this story. And every time you hear my mother's voice, that is my external voice in the argument. All right, here we go. So when we left off, Harry called me a not-so-friendly name, which he would later say was due to the way I was acting. I was headed to my mother's house to hang out with her on her birthday. I had just picked up some duck donuts, flowers, and various other gifts, and was en route to spend time with her. However, after seeing Harold's comment, I had to pull over to read it and then respond. He didn't just stop at calling me a name, though. He actually went further to say, Ronald, if you're into stats, how about researching and there you will find your facts? And why the later part, was that necessary? Smith. You'll notice he's using a bit of apologetic language here to indicate he's already regretful to have opened the name calling box, which is the Facebook argument version of the nuclear option. Once name calling has begun, the person who has been called the name either responds in kind, stays focused on the argument, or shuts the discussion down. I chose the latter, since at this point I felt as if I had made my point and knew that because of the route he chose, he was never going to address the root of my statement, which to reiterate was that what he was saying was not factual and that he was actually being a bit racist. So my response was, If I had not done my research, I wouldn't be challenging your ignorance, Harry, but clearly you have no basis for any of your claims because you resorted to name calling. By the time I arrived at my mother's house, I was livid. She recognized this immediately, and I gave her a recap of the entire debacle. At this point, I felt I was way more upset because I felt very alone despite knowing that I wasn't. Many times when I decide to engage in an argument on Facebook, I do so not because I'm attempting to feed my ego or burn someone, but because in many cases, people stand tall on information that is plainly not accurate, and I feel that I have a duty to correct them. What if they infect someone with their ignorance? What if that ignorance breeds more bigotry? 
What if they call someone else to start making decisions based on that bigotry? On top of this, there is nothing that gets me more stirred up than racism and or bigotry because I still feel that in 2017, there is no place for it here in the U.S. or anywhere. I need to be clear that this is not just me having a simple difference of opinion. In some cases, I feel it is these differences of opinion that lead to drastic consequences, especially for marginalized groups. I'd already made a decision not to respond to anything else Harry said. But then he decided to say this. What makes your research writer accurate versus mine? Statements like challenging my ignorance. How would you categorize that, sir? Because there are less offensive words to use. Or do you have the ability to recognize that you used an offensive word? Misinformed is a good one to use. What do you think, Ronald? Now, I'm sure I don't have to explain the irony of Harry considering that being called ignorant is as offensive as being called an a-hole. To me, this seems it would only be as offensive if the person being called ignorant actually considered themselves to be... Oh, wait, I get it. I get it now. Anyway, by the time I left my mother's house, she had strengthened my decision not to respond to the thread anymore. However, I made the mistake or calculated decision to tell my sister Marilyn that something was brewing on Facebook. And then she chimed in. Mr. Sutton, you called my brother outside of his name, but then you apologized to Janie and not him? Your respecter of person is showing, sir. I suppose age really doesn't equal maturity. Now Marilyn comes in off the top rope, or at least the medium rope. Two things. One, Janie is a person who was watching the conversation unfold and responded with a gasping emoji when Harry called me an a-hole. And Harry responded with, Sorry, Janie. And respecter of persons is a church term that is to mean a person is showing preference or respect to one individual, but not another, for whatever reasons they deem important or worthy. Harry was quick to respond with, Marilyn, your brother called me outside of mines twice. His arrogant self needs to apologize to me. I stand by my word. And then, I see it runs in the family. At this point, Marilyn executed wisdom by jumping out of the debate before she said something we both would regret. And she responded with, Oh, you're upset by his intelligence. I see. All right then, Mr. Guy, you got it. Thanks for the compliment, Marilyn. However, Harry was not quite done having the last word. Not at all, Marilyn. I'm upset about his selection of words that are offensive. Notice how he makes this entire thing about me calling him ignorant, which takes us further from the point that he was in fact stating something that was not true, while also being racist. However, now that he felt he had been heard or had somehow made his point, he decided to go back to the originator of the post and do the fake apology tag in. I apologize for this inappropriate conversation on your wall. Please forgive me. I'm letting it go right now. So at this point, as I noted before, a virtual crowd had formed and folks were filtering in and out of the debate with likes and views. I shared the conversation on my own thread and had amassed a good amount of support myself, whether it be necessary or not. However, when I went back to see if any additional comments were added, I saw that Ted, the post originator, had deleted the thread. Now, as a point of clarity, this has always been a pet peeve of mine. If you post something and you regret your own words, I have no problem with you deleting it. However, whenever I've been in this type of discussion and a poster will delete the thread of the offender or the offender will delete their own comments, it would seem that they are trying to kill the interaction by omission rather than any real resolution. He then posted another status that basically feigned surprise that his original post caused such a conflict and he had to delete it because preachers were getting out of character. This kind of bothered me. I strive to be a person that is the same all the time, whether at church, home, work, or otherwise. Much of this podcast is done to be an effort to be the same person all the time and show where my roles converge. However, Harry took the opportunity to apologize on the new post. Yes, it was crazy, but unfortunately, I am guilty because I allowed myself to get caught up in it and went out of character. And so since it was on the page where the offense occur, Tetric, I hope it's OK for me to use your page to openly apologize to first all of you to Ronald, who I did call out of his name, regardless of how I felt his responses to me were it's totally unacceptable. And from the bottom of my heart, Ronald, I'm asking for your forgiveness and to your sister, Marilyn, who was offended by my response and to all others who may have been offended. I ask for your forgiveness and I promise it won't ever happen again. I liked the comment. However, I did not respond. I felt that I had said enough. However, other people from the virtual crowd had taken up arms on my behalf and challenged not only Ted's original post, but Harry's response to it. They chimed in challenging his ignorance, albeit in a far nicer manner than I had. They questioned whether or not Ted's original theory was clear enough 
or safe enough to post. Harry came to Ted's defense by saying, There was nothing wrong with the post at all. The problem I had was the choice of words that were used by another person that was offensive personally to me when they didn't agree with my statement. The post was clear. People need to learn on Facebook how to state one's opinion without insulting another, all because they don't agree. To call a person ignorant is very offensive. I kindly asked the person not to do that, and they continue to do so, and instead of me ignoring his conversation, I momentarily went out of character and called this person a name that I felt was depicting his current state of mind. As far as Ted posted, it was very clear. I agreed with Ted. The other person who are friends with Ted didn't address Ted. He chose to attack me instead, and he felt like I was stereotyping Hispanics, but I wasn't. He overlooked an important word of the topic criminal, went on attack mode to defend his premise, which was cool until the bad choice of wording. But all is well. Please note how he takes the opportunity to not only defend his point, but to unapologize to me by clarifying why he called me the name he did. I would say that if it were out of character, I don't think he should have a reason for doing it. I also liked this post to make sure he knew that I was still reading and not responding. The people fighting on my behalf actually took it upon themselves to explain to him what the word ignorant meant and why it wasn't offensive. However, Harry remained unconvinced. I respect your opinion, but for me, it was offensive. I totally understood Ted post clearly. I did not use percentages in my post. I said criminals. Missing one word out of statement can distort and change the meaning. The word ignorant is twofold. It depicts not only the lack of knowledge, but the character of one's attitude. The word misinformed would have been a better word to use to defend one's premise in these types of arguments or debates. But again, this is my opinion. Please note how he defines the word ignorant, then wraps up his definition by saying that this is his opinion. He has completely hedged his bet here. I've had a lot of time to think about this. And I would say this. I still feel the need to fight ignorance on Facebook. And that back and forth will unlikely be the last argument I have via social media. However, I learned a few things and relearned some others. Number one, choose your battles wisely. Number two, use sarcasm sparingly if you want to convince someone of your point. Three, use spell check and grammar check if you want to be taken seriously in a debate. And finally, four, nothing is deleted from the Internet. Not when we have screenshots. Time Well Spent with Ronald is a production of Oh, It's Big Ron Studios. Creative support from Mass Potential and Ben Schallenberger. Special thanks to Mass Potential and Peggy Lee Young. Theme music provided by royalty-free music from Ben Sound. Outro music provided by Michael Corte. Additional music provided by royalty-free music from Ben Sound. Got a question about the show? Got some feedback? Follow me on Twitter at O-H-I-T-S-B-I-G-R-O-N. Time Well Spent will be back soon. Thanks for listening. Test, 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 test. What makes your research right or accurate versus mine? Statements like challenging my ignorance, how would you categorize that, sir? Because there are less offensive words to use, or do you use the ability to recognize that you used an offensive word? Misinformed is a good one. Oh, hold on, let me start over. The Somna, the, <laughs> not only does he not use punctuation, but when he does use punctuation, it's wrong. He's not a good writer. Oh, man. Okay. Ronald, you are an asshole. Can you emphasize that there's a space between ass and hole? Because my friend Ryan D pointed that out. It was very funny. Okay, I need to talk a little bit so we can test those levels. Yeah. Like, talk, say full sentences. <laughs> no, seriously, like, I can't even listen to my own voicemail. And I'm speaking into a microphone. Oh, I even have white girl vocal fry. This is the worst. You're fine. Just, uh, when you come down, don't drop too low.
And vocal- Don't tell me what to do. Uh, or first that. Oh, man. <laughs> I'll try again. <laughs> I feel like I'm letting Marilyn down. You're fine. So it's you fine. need to apologize for me. It's perfectly fine. Okay. However, every now and then, I will see a post. Oh, however. However, every now and then, I will see a post that would. Ronald, you are a terrible writer and a bad person. Oh. Sorry. Hey, thanks for sticking around to the very end. Hey, if you want to support the show, do me a favor and on your Apple device, find the podcast, give it five stars and write a review. Doing this helps the show and continues to help build Oh, It's Big Ron Studios. Thanks again for listening and thanks for your support.